Hey Audrey! Hey Zoe! What are we going to discuss for today? Oh, today we are going to tackle about functions and relations. Are you ready Zoe? I am very ready Audrey. Shall we begin? Sure, let's go! Hey there fellow learner! In today's topic, we'll be tackling about functions and relations. But before we begin, there are different ways in expressing these so-called functions and relations. They could be expressed as set of ordered pairs, table of values, mappings, graph, and equation. Now we all know how functions and relations are expressed. Let us now tackle what is function and what is a relation. A function is a relation in which the input only has one output, while on the other hand, a relation is a rule that relates values from a set of values, called the domain, to a second set of values, called the range. To better understand the difference of a function and a relation, we have this so-called function machine. A function machine is an imaginary device that receives inputs and generates outputs. A function takes an input x and returns an output f of x, just as the image shown of a function machine. Our input is 15. Once it enters the machine, the rule is set to adding 5 in our value, therefore having an output is 20. Do you remember that all functions are relations, but not all relations are functions? Now that we know what a function and a relation is, let us now proceed in the different ways in expressing functions and relations. First, we have the set of ordered pairs. The set of ordered pairs is composed of two coordinates, the x-coordinate or the abscissa, and the y-coordinate or the ordinate. In a set of ordered pairs, the domain is the set of all x-coordinates, while well, the range is the set of all the y-coordinates. The set of ordered pairs can be considered as a function if every element in the set is composed of different x and y-coordinates and no common x-coordinates exist in the given set. Now let us have an example. First example, we have a set of ordered pairs, 5 and 10, 10 and 20, 15 and 30, and 20 and 40. Let us now extract our domain, which is our x-coordinates, which is the first number in the ordered pair. The domain are 5, 10, 15, and 20. Now let us extract our range, which is our y-coordinates, which is the second number in our ordered pair, 10, 20, 30, and 40. Now we both have our domain and range. We can formulate our rule by observing the given. As you can see, the general rule of the set of ordered pairs is that y is twice of x. And lastly, is our given set a function or a relation? To determine if our given set of ordered pairs is a function or not, we must look into our domain. If there are repeating values, therefore it is not a function but a relation. If no repetition, it is a function. Moving back to the given, since we do not have a repeating value in the domain, therefore the given set of ordered pairs is a function. Next example, now we have our set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain and the range. Now, since we could not formulate any rule in the given set of ordered pairs, therefore, our rule is none. Now, is it a function or a relation? The given set of ordered pairs is a function for there is no repetition of values in our domain. Letter C, now we have our set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain, the range, and the rule. Since we have a repetition in our domain, therefore, 
the set of ordered pairs is a relation. Next example. Now we have our set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain, the range, and the rule. The given set of ordered pairs is a function for there is no repetition of values in our domain. Letter E. Now we have our set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain, the range, and the rule. The given set of ordered pairs is a function for there is no repetition of values in our domain. Now let us discuss the second way of expressing functions and relations, which is table of values. The table of values is a set of ordered pairs written as a table of values still composed of x and y coordinates. The x coordinates are written on the first row and below are the y coordinates. The table of values is just similar to the previous set of ordered pairs, but our values will be placed in a table. Now let us proceed to our examples. Letter A. We have the given set of ordered pairs. 3 and 6, 4 and 24, 6 and 18, and 6 and 24. Just like in the previous topic, we would extract our domain and range, or the x and y coordinates, and place it in a table. Now to determine if our given is a function or a relation. Since we have a repetition in our domain, therefore, the set of ordered pairs is a relation. Next example. Now we have another set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain and range and place it in a table. The given set of ordered pairs is a function for there is no repetition of values in our domain. Now we have another set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain and range and place it in a table. The given set of ordered pairs is a function for there is no repetition of values in our domain. Now we have another set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain and range and place it in a table. The given set of ordered pairs is a function for there is no repetition of values in our domain. Final example. Now we have another set of ordered pairs. Extract the domain and range and place it in a table. Since we have a repetition in our domain, therefore the set of ordered pairs is a relation. Now, let us tackle the third way of expressing functions and relations, which is mappings. In mappings, this is where the values on the left side are the x-coordinates and on the right side are the y-coordinates. You could place values in any shape you want as long as you labeled which is the x and which is the y and put a connection to the values through an arrow. On mappings, we have four ways of concluding if our given is a function or a relation. On the first given, we have it as 1 is to 1. 1x one value to 1y value, which has no repetition on both x and y values. And 1 is to 1 is a function. Next, we have many is to many. In many is to many, we have a repetition in both our x and y values. Many is to many is not a function, therefore a relation. Next, we have many is to one. In many is to one, repetition only occurs on the y values. Therefore, many is to one is a function. And lastly, we have one is to many, Repetition occurs on the x values, making one is to many a relation. Moving on to our examples. We have our given here. Since we have a repetition on both our x and y values, therefore, the given is many is to many, which is a relation. Next example, 
Since we have the repetition in our x values, the given mapping is 1 is to many, which is not a function. Third example, since no repetition occurred on both x and y, we can conclude that the given mapping is 1 is to 1 and it is a function. Next example, since there is a repetition in the y values, we can conclude that the given is many is to 1, which is a function. Last example, since there is a repetition in the y values, we can conclude that the given is many is to 1, which is a function. Are you guys still keeping up? Good! We're almost there. The fourth way of expressing functions, our relations, is through graphs. The process in testing the graph is called a vertical line test. This is to determine if a graph is a function or a relation. A graph represents a function if it is impossible to draw a vertical line that intersects the graph more than once, just like in the image shown. Keep in mind, if there is only one point of intersection between the graph and the vertical line and will remain consistent, then the graph is a graph of a function. If there is more than one point of intersection between the graph and the vertical line, then the graph is a relation. Let us head on to our examples. The first graph is a relation for there are two points of intersection. The second graph is a relation for the one point of intersection does not remain consistent throughout the graph. The next graph is a function for it remains consistent with one point of intersection. The fourth graph is a function for there is only one point of intersection. And lastly, graph is a function for it remains consistent with one point of intersection. And the final way of expressing functions and relations is through equation. Keep in mind these four rules in determining if the equation is a function or a relation. Now, let us proceed with the examples. The first example is not a function, for there is no y. The second example is a relation, for it is not in equality form. The third example is a function, for it satisfies the rule. The fourth example is a function, for it also satisfies the rule. The final example is a relation, for y is in an absolute value symbol. Well done! Now you know what a function and a relation is and the ways it is being expressed. How was the topic, Zoe? I find it very interesting, Aubrey. How about you? Me too. Well, I hope our viewers find it easy too. Well, this is the end of our presentation. Hope you guys learned something. And see you in our next lesson. Bye!